Welcome, boys and girls, to my ranking of the Die Hard movies. Yes, I'm going to be ranking all five Die Hard movies. So, let's get this underway. In at number five is... A Good Day to Die Hard. This movie is the one that got the most backlash. This is the one that got the most hate. I, however, don't really mind it. I have some problems with it. There are some problems with this movie. But it ain't that bad of a movie. I've seen a lot worse. And I mean a lot worse. The fact that John McClane kept saying I'm on vacation the whole time did get fucking annoying real quick. But it wasn't really <clears throat> something that would bother me in the long run. And the villain wasn't very memorable, but he was kind of goofy, which kind of helped a little bit. Sometimes you can, I like a silly villain, kind of like Simon Gruber. He, there was a sense of humor behind him, but he was dead serious most of the time. I kind of got that vibe from him, but not as awesome as Simon Gruber. But, yeah. In at number four, we have Die Hard with the Vengeance. Die Hard with the Vengeance is one of my favorite ones. Not my all-time top favorite, but it is nice. And the reason why it's so far down below is because it had to go ahead and play the race card by making Samuel L. Jackson the racist dude that needs to help McClane. Look, I like Samuel L. Jackson a lot. He has a big mouth and he cusses a lot. That's funny. That's funny here. I don't like the way his character is in this movie until he actually starts to grow on McLean later on. So the fact that takes almost an hour into the movie, yeah. That's one of the reasons why it's so far down for me. The action was nice and Simon Gruber, again, a nice villain. His brother is still the best though, but yeah, Simon was alright. He's alright. You know, it's Jeremy Irons too, so yeah. Action was nice. The story could have been a little bit better. But driving around New York City looked like fun. And it was fun in a Die Hard Trilogy video game, so I will give it that. In that number three. Die Hard 2. Die Hard 2 is the most underrated Die Hard film to date. Nobody really talks about Die Hard 2 unless they review in their entire series. Okay? And the reason why Die Hard 2 ain't number 2 for me because I found one that's a little bit better than that that I liked. That's number 2. But, yeah. I have fun with Die Hard 2. Die Hard 2 is a fun popcorn flick. It knows it. It's, sometimes it's a little bit cheesy, it's a little bit corny, but it knows it. That's the best thing I can give Die Hard 2, is that it knows what it is, and it's not afraid to say what it is. So, why not give it to Die Hard 2 at, for at least, fuck, it has the best ending, second best ending, to a Die Hard film. Okay, who, whoever think about trying to blow up a 747 straight out of midair by just lighting a, a trail of jet fuel on the fucking ground. And it actually worked. Okay, that's, that's insane. But it's awesome. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. And that number two. Live free or die hard. This came out right before my birthday, three days before my birthday actually, and I was going on 20 years old at that time, and I had the best time I could ever have for my birthday, it was me and my cousin went to go see this, he liked it too, and by looking at the first trailer and seeing that it was PG-13, I was fucking shocked, I'm like, oh my god, Die Hard is PG-13, this is not going to be good. But in fact, it was not even a factor because they would make a un there was an unrated cut 
the best thing I can get Die Hard, I mean, Live Free Die Hard is that it was shot R-rated, but edited down to PG-13. And they did a great job editing it down to a PG-13. You would not notice it was a rated R movie beforehand. So that's the bigger plus. Plus John McClane jumping off a jet onto the supposedly 105 freeway right next to LAX and they kept replaying the same thing over and over again before he actually made that little big ass U-turn up the little ramp thing. But other than that, they kept replaying LAX in the background over and over again while the jet is coming to shoot those trucks. That was funny. <laughs> he went from Washington to fucking LAX. <laughs> but, yeah. Not wa not Washington. He went to Virginia, I think, to LAX. It's weird. <laughs> it's fucking weird. But as you already all know, my number one is, of course, Die Hard. You cannot have a Die Hard list and not have Die Hard 1 as your number one. The one that started it all. The one that's the reason why I'm sitting here doing this video. Fan of uh, Die Hard today. And ironically, the best villain in movie history with Hans Gruber. It doesn't get no better than that. Made an action star out of Bruce Willis. The man coming off of fucking Moonlighting. Which is an okay movie. But that one I probably will watch again. Unless I want to review it. But Die Hard gave him that start. It was awesome. Everything about this movie was awesome. Fucking, uh, um, what's his name? Carl Winslow stood out in this fucking movie. How do you make the fucking guy from Family Matters stand out in a Die Hard movie? But they did it. John McTiernan did it. He did it with number three, but he, he made number one the best for me stuck in the building with 12 terrorists what was it 43 stories high using Fox's own studio as the setting that's fucking awesome fucking awesome and that is my list for my ranking of the Die Hard movies let me know down below what is your list of ranking of ranking the Die Hard films down below.